speaking of the Eagles, they can nail down that one seed finally on Sunday with a visit from the New Orleans Saints, who are 6-9 and nine and still alive in the chase for the NFC South, the none-of-the-above division. Somebody's getting to the playoffs. Somebody's hosting a playoff game. And that was the site of the first road playoff win in Saints history some 10 years ago when it was Sean Payton against Chip Kelly, nine years ago to be absolutely correct, although I think there's a chance I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Nine years ago, it was an NBC game, Saints at Eagles, first road playoff game ever for the Saints. It's trying to get there now. Eagles trying to get that one seed. Jalen Hurts, Peter, returned to practice for the first time since injuring his shoulder against the Bears in week 15. Limited basis. They haven't ruled him out. Jay Glazer reported on Saturday as far part of the Fox pregame show that basically Eagles lose to the Cowboys. Hurts is going to push to play in week 17. Eagles beat the Cowboys. They'll try to get him back in week 18 so it doesn't go five weeks between actually playing. So Hurts is going to do everything he can to try to play. They want to get this one seed. They want to nail this down. They don't want to run the risk slim as it may be of a disintegration late in the season that blows everything we just assumed they were going to have. They became the odds-on favorite to be the one seed at some point in October, November, and they're they're hitting this injury thing late in the year that's potentially going to derail them. But uh, I, whether it's Hurts or Minshew, as you said earlier, I don't see the Eagles losing a game, losing both of the next two games, and they should be able to handle the Saints. They're good enough at the other positions to handle the Saints on Sunday. You know, I think the other thing to look at with the Eagles, too, is the Lane Johnson situation. And and look, I'm not I'm not waving some panicky flag here, but I think this game this weekend, whoever plays quarterback for the Eagles is really important because you do not want to go against the New York Giants in week 18 uh, with that defense without Lane Johnson and uh, with the right side of that line being pretty questionable. And so against that pass rush. And so, you know, whether the Giants have clinched their spot or not, it's coincidental, Mike, that that I think today is the 15-year anniversary of the New England Patriots with a 15-0 record waltzing into East Rutherford to play the Giants. And the Giants and Patriots had their playoff spots and slots clinched going into that game. And Tom Coughlin, who now has just wrote a book about this season, Tom Coughlin had a choice to make. Do we want to play our guys? Do we want to rest them? All that. And he walked into his team meeting on Monday and he goes, we're the New York friggin' football giants. And we are playing to win this game. And the players loved it. Absolutely loved it. They wanted to knock the Patriots off. Anyway, they lose 38-35, but they won a lot more. They gained a lot more. And the next morning, John Madden has a voicemail on Tom Coughlin's uh, telephone in his office back when people use landlines. And... <laughs> John Madden leaves Tom Coughlin a voicemail and said, you know, I've never been more proud to be associated with the, uh, with the NFL when I, than I was last night, you know, in the last X number of years, it's the greatest thing I've seen. So I think, and again, I'm not saying Brian Dayball is going to repeat history. If the giants have a playoff spot locked after this weekend, I don't know what he's going to do. And I'm not suggesting that he has to do what Coughlin did. But I think that is going to be ringing in his ears a little bit if they go into Philadelphia having already clinched a playoff spot. You know, that's a great point because it really did give the Giants a lift in 2007, gave them the confidence they could play with the Patriots if and when their paths crossed again. And it also gave them the confidence to embark on road game, road game, road game in the NFC playoff yeah. field because they were the five seed that year. And uh, it, it ended up being a pretty exciting time for everyone except for the New England Patriots. When you mentioned that game, Peter, so many memories came back. What a mess that was because remember, it was a Saturday night game. It was supposed to be on yeah. NFL Network only. 
and there were so yeah. few people relative to the rest of the country who had NFL Network. There was pressure on the NFL. And everybody and wanted to see the game. cast by... Yeah. Right. And it was on... Was it on NBC and CBS? Is that where it ended up? It wasn't on Fox. I think it was on NBC and CBS simulcast, I think. There were two networks that aired it uh, instead of or in addition to NFL Network. But they wanted that How game out How about this there. for craziness, and, you know, That's another Mike. reason for it to, to, to – go ahead. I, I'll, I'll give you a little crazy nugget about that game. You know the broadcast team for that game? Bryant Gumbel did play-by-play. Play. Bryant Gumbel, okay? Chris Collinsworth did color, and Adam Schefter was the sideline reporter. <laughs> I remember the Bryant Gumbel days. The one thing that stands out about the Bryant Gumbel days is every once in a while someone would belch, and people thought it was Bryant Gumbel, but there was some live mic somewhere in the stadium that someone was sneaking around and belching <laughs> into. That's the I may, may, maybe Bryant Gumbel would hope he had a different <laughs> legacy than that and just the mind of some random schlub. But that's the one thing I remember. And here it is, Dateline, December 26, 2007, from the Associated Press. It was simulcast on CBS and NBC along with NFL Network. It was the first regular season game on three networks in NFL history. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.